I want to go over the power hour. When I talk about power hour, this is a big short that happened in the S&P. I was talking about it. I was chatting over with it in the chat room. One of our uh, favorite setups in the trade room is this, what's called these, these zones have been back tested with an artificial intelligence program the last 30, over the last 30 years. So we know these zones are, are accurate in calling possible reversals and all these markets, especially the S&P, that's what we tested uh, is the S&P 500. Um, so when it comes up to these zones, these are these zones, these are these zones, the red zones and green zones that come up. And we're looking for a reversal in these zones. So what we're going to do is if you get out, if the zones are red, that means we're in a downtrend. We're looking for a candle close outside of that zone. But before it turns a red zone to a green zone, we're looking for the candle to reverse back inside. And it'll give you a, what's called a yellow entry bar, yellow trigger bar, entry bar, that shows us that that's a possible reversal. An arrow will pop above the bar. An alarm will go off on your computers with the new software. And it lets you know that's a possible reversal. Well, I go over what's called power hour. Uh, power hour is there's one in the morning and there's one in the evening. A power hour is defined as extreme volume, extreme volatility in the markets. And typically it happens in the morning session near the New York open and the evening session near the New York close. So what we want to do is if we get these reversals that are happening, especially the outer edge slingshot in that power hour range. Now, I like power hour from 3.30 Eastern all the way to around 6.15 to 6.20. Um, traders say, why do you extend it past 4? And I'll show you why, because it works in the futures. The futures don't close till 5 p.m. Eastern. So on uh, news days or volatile days, you typically get a follow through to around 6.15, 6.20 um, at, uh, from 3.30. The morning session, a lot of professional traders consider the power hour 9.30 to 10.30. Well, the volume times are 9 to 11 typically, but I like power hour from 9 to 10 in the futures market. Futures start a little bit earlier than stocks do. So you typically get some nice trades from the 9 to 10 power hour. We had one yesterday that set up beautiful to the upside on the ES. I'll show you in a second. So this is the evening power hour, and the, what happened is we came up at, at 4.57. A lot of traders are thinking, well, that's kind of late in the tooth, getting into 4 o'clock. What's well, not, because futures extend over to 5 p.m., and I like watching it going into around the 6.15 or 4.15 level, 4.20 level. So you got a reversal here at a um, nice little uh, short signal at 62.5, 51.62.5. Uh, the swing low got as low as, what, 43. So almost 20 S&P points potential on the downside on this power hour short. Well, the same thing set us will happen on, this is a NASDAQ yesterday going into the close. It fired about the same exact time, just a little bit afterwards. It closed one candle outside of it. And then we got the nice little short, you can see, that came in to the power hour short on the NQ. So you get a lot of nice little volatility in the power hour. Yesterday morning, uh, before it came up, I was talking traders in the trade room. We had a possible, um, we had a possible sl uh, power uh, outer slingshot short. So on the microphone yesterday, I was talking about this when we broke out and we had started retracing. So around uh, 9:45, I was talking about watch for the outer edge slingshot. These are leading indicators, not lagging. And sure enough, right afterwards, we get a close outside of my outer zone. The zone's green. We're looking to buy. And then we get a reversal bar that came live in the room here at this level at 949. And that fired at 38 and a half. The, the rally came up to 60. So 38, 48, 58, over 22 S&P point potential. On a power hour session, I said I love that 9 to 10 uh, level. Um, if you go back on my strategy and test it over the last 90 days, you can see that 12 Simrico and 20 Simrico work really well on that outer edge trade on the S&P that we've tested. So then we come into a double top breakout. We talked about this breaking out into a new level because market profile, it already hit our target of 47 earlier. So 47 was our new breakout that, from profile in the room. We get a breakout in the room, a profile at 48 and a quarter. And it gets as high as 60 for a 12-point S&P run uh, from our breakout. But before that, let's get into uh, the breakout level. 
So we have high value and low value areas of the market profile. Uh, market profile has worked for 39 years now. Um, it's one of the top indicators out there that I've ever seen in the market. Um, there's thousands of indicators that, that are out there, but to me, 99% of a 99.6% don't call uh, the, the moves in the market like market profile will because that's all the participants in the market. It doesn't take our opinion. It's not my opinion where the market's going. It's actually market structure. This is all the volume coming in the market, all participants, all algorithms, all hedge funds, banks, uh, professional, amateur traders. It spits out these high value, low value and control points. Uh, we don't use a small market profile like a 30 minute market profile. We like to use uh, hour, hour, two hour, three hour, four hour profiles that spits out this average of high value area where the breakout is. So what happened was high value was sitting at this level. I drew it on this chart. We broke out a high value area. We start closing outside of this market. What that created is an imbalanced market. When you're in, inside a market profile for the last 39 years, the market is balanced. You get outside a profile, you become imbalanced. When you become imbalanced, there's no resistance to the next market profile. Well, my next market profile was 47. 47 was my target I talked about in the room was right here. So here's what here was our target in the room when the breakout happened at the breakout happened at 28, 28, 28 and a half, and I said the target is all the way up to 47. Well, we had the zone breakout, the yellow trigger came in, yellow entry bar, our oscillator down here, you can see it broke out above 100, does a little cup and handle, and then flat lines, the flat line tells you a hard trend is coming, and the market just uh, explodes to the upside. And we get another breakout for a three-pointer right there. We get an outer edge slingshot, then another breakout that comes through on the uh, break there. So now this morning, uh, going into the session, uh, we had a breakout earlier for you early morning traders. A breakout earlier happened um, for early morning traders at 3 o'clock. What I'm looking for now in the live market, uh, non-farm payrolls comes out in about three minutes. I'm going to get the charts back up. I'm looking for an outer edge cell here. I need to close outside of this edge and then close back inside it for a yellow entry. Or if it's too weak, I need to close below this zone breakdown, which is 41.50.50. So that's how we stock our trades in the room. You got these zones. We're looking for an outer edge cell here in the zone. If it's too weak, we're looking for a zone breakdown. As of right now, the oscillator is paid into a stronger market. The market's in a counter trend trade move. You see the oscillators above 100, little cup and handle. It's starting to trend up a little bit. So we are in a positive move up. What I'd like to see, if we get a zone breakdown, get this oscillator to come like this, break down below negative 100, do a little mini cup and handle, inverse cup and handle, flatten out, and start trending like it did uh, earlier in the morning session. I'd like to see that on the zone breakdown here. So those are our two setups here this morning. We're going to stalk and look for. The indic new indicator has been released. These automatically come up. Um, go to the PDF, guys, um, on the members download page. It tells you exactly what these indicators do. And um, a lot of you guys had questions, and I made sure that we answered those um, uh, yesterday and updated a new PDF for you on most of the majority of your questions. So let's uh, take a look at that. Uh, we do have a big gap in the market on market profile. Um, I am looking for this market to go down to lower. Uh, we look at previous day's market profile. That's how I get my targets. I got a huge gap in the market, guys. Gap all the way down here to 51.17.75. A big gap in the market. If we get through this control point, which is a low today, pretty much uh, uh, on this session, uh, we're looking for a nice zone breakdowns and et cetera. Uh, look at this big gap in the market. Huge gap in the market. We should have a nice day trading today. I'm looking for it to break down, get this zone breakdown. We'll do a follow-up video here later on this afternoon, see if the zone edge hits or the zone breakdowns.